Hi there, so this is episode 5 of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, The Seagate. I feel there's not a whole lot to talk about this one compared to the previous episode, Flowers for She-Ra, but I mostly feel that's because this one is a bit smaller in scope. Uh, there's no huge horde army to fight. Uh, the kingdom that we do end up visiting is relatively small and pretty sparse, um, but that doesn't mean this is a bad episode. This one was still very, very enjoyable, and I attribute that to the three new characters that we get here. First off is Seahawk, the roguish, handsome sea captain. Uh, he was just such a delight to watch. You get the impression that he was competent, but he was such a blowhard, really eager to show off what he can do, just re wants to sing at the drop of a hat. He's just such a delight. Um, but that consequently makes Seahawk probably the only thing I disliked about the episode because at times it could get a little bit grating, but I am sure that is by design. So I am hoping Seahawk will return in future episodes just to see if he can do more or maybe redeem himself a little bit. And considering that Seahawk does appear in the very final shot of the opening theme song, yeah, I'm pretty sure that he will be back. Uh, the second we get is a new antagonist character, Scorpia, uh, Catra's partner in crime in this mission. Uh, Scorpia, again, is pretty fun because she doesn't seem complex. Compared to characters like Hordak, uh, Shadow Weaver, or Catra, Scorpia is you get the impression she is very simple-minded. Uh, she doesn't really think a whole lot, she just does what she does, and because of that, it makes her very endearing. It doesn't seem she is outright evil, more like she is given her orders and then she just does them while having a bit of fun at the same time. She appears to be the quintessential force captain and soldier, and it really makes a good dynamic to the really serious, angry and resentful Katra. And finally, we get our new princess character of this episode, Princess Mermista of the Kingdom of Selenius. And I feel like Mermista could be best described as a uh, mermaid Daria, for any who remember that old uh, MTV show. Uh, Mermista is just really indifferent, pessimistic, eh, whatever. Uh, not so much valley girl like that, but more like, uh, just, eh, doesn't really care a whole lot. And again, that makes her really endearing and really serves as a sharp contract to Princess Perfuma from the previous episode. So yeah, those three characters are really great. I'm hoping to see them again in the future. Now, another thing I liked was seeing Katra's squad in action. Uh, yeah, um, what are their names again? Lonnie, Kyle, I think, and Lizardman. Um, given that the three of them were in the first few episodes, it didn't seem, it really made as if they were just throwaway side characters. Uh, you wouldn't see them again. Um, but that they appeared again here is a good utilization of them, especially since they also appear in the theme song. So again, I am really hopeful that they will play a much larger role down the line, especially considering that you get a bit of a sense of resentment that Katra is their leader now. You, I, I feel that Lonnie especially doesn't really like that, that she has to take orders from somebody who is clearly less inferior than Adora. And finally, what I really liked um, was Glimmer. Now, as I said previously, Glimmer is my favorite character because she has a lot of potential uh, despite uh, being over her head in a couple of places, a bit immature, and needing to really stay true to her mother, the Queen's orders. And this episode really goes to show what she can do when she is serious-minded, 
when she knows what the stakes are and when she takes on much greater responsibilities, being the reasonable one amidst this group of the best friends squad. While Adora just was not really doing a whole lot and Bo was having such a goofy time with Seahawk and being so smitten with him, Glimmer really stayed focused on the task because she knows she had to convince her mother, the Queen, that allying with Selenius and Mermista was the right and best thing to do. And I really appreciate that. And I am hoping Glimmer will continue on this character evolution. Oh yeah, one other thing I forgot to mention, Adora and Catra confronting each other again. Just seeing the two together bantering, Adora trying to be indifferent, Catra being so resentful about becoming a force captain and Adora not caring at all. Adora really is trying to stay focused as she on fixing the gate while Catra is angry, want wanting to get a rise out of her and desperately wanting Adora to come back. The two's dynamic is really strong here and it really shows how, how close they really were. It just it was just saddening to see the two of them continue to split apart that I am sure will pay off down the line. Now the moral I feel of this episode is the same as last time, needing to stand up for what you believe in and when the time is right, really taking action. The key focus and difference here is on the two principal princesses. Whereas Perfuma was naive and innocent and just hoping and wishing the universal right itself, Mermista was really indifferent and pessimistic about the whole thing. It really seemed like she accepted the fall of her kingdom and everything that'll be happening as just an inevitability. And an, yeah, inevitability on that she'll be, uh, it'll fall, what's the point, whatever. Uh, that's probably the not the right thing to say. It's not as if she was whatever, more like what else can be done about it. No point in being excited, just straight up get to the point. So I feel that when it comes to those two, it clearly shows how hopeless this rebellion seems to be against the Horde on why they withdrew from the first rebellion and the first princess alliance in the first place. But clearly with She-Ra and Glimmer here really wanting to bring all this together, it gives uh, Mermista and Perfuma hope. And I wonder when we get to the point when all these princesses will come together, how their personalities will clash, if there will be any conflict between them before they become a real unified group. So all in all, I say, despite this uh, vlog going pretty long, uh, it, the episode was pretty good. I really liked it. I feel there is nothing really complex or major here. Just another good episode to continue the story and the building of the character roster of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. It didn't really wow me like the previous episodes, um, but that doesn't make it any less enjoyable. So I believe that is it for me. So I'll be seeing you guys next time for episode 6, System Failure. So see you guys around. Catch you later.